Welcome to your very first beginning tutorial on CSS, and this is part of our ongoing web development series. Now, if you do not have a solid understanding of HTML, you should go to my channel page and go through the HTML for Beginners tutorial set. That's kind of a prerequisite. Now, if you already know HTML and you feel you don't need that, that's fine, but if you don't know anything about HTML, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and take that series because an understanding of HTML is really crucial to using CSS. CSS. Now, as a note, we will also be introducing some new HTML elements in this series, and the reason is they go hand in hand together. So it didn't make sense to discuss those in the HTML for beginners because they really work hand in hand with CSS. In terms of what you will need, we're just going to use Notepad for now, just like we did in the HTML for beginners series. Now, eventually we'll use an editor, but for now we just need Notepad. Okay, so what is CSS? Well, here's the dictionary version. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. It is a style sheet language used for describing the look and formatting of a document written in a markup language. Markup language, which is, of course, for us, HTML. Well, that's pretty nice, that dictionary term. But what is it simply? Well, it just adds style to your HTML. That's it. Pretty simple. And the nice thing about it is you can completely control how your web pages look without changing your HTML. And so it comes in very handy. An analogy I like to use is imagine you build a fence. And imagine that fence is your HTML. But the fence is unpainted. It's basically just wood. And so in order to add color to it, you need to paint that fence. So the paint would be the CSS in this analogy. It adds style to the fence. So that's a good way to think of it. You could also use the same analogy for a house. You build a house and then you have to add style to the house right you have to paint the inside and the exterior you know you need to add fixtures and paintings and all sorts of things that add style to that house so that's a good way to think of this okay well let's not waste any more time let's go ahead and do some CSS in this initial video okay so let's open up notepad and we're going to reuse some of the source that we used in the HTML tutorial series and you guys will probably recognize that if you took that series I think this is from episode 2 or three. Now, if you do not have this source, feel free to hit the pause button now and just go ahead and copy all of this. So let's go ahead and add some CSS to this HTML document. And what we're going to go ahead and use here is the style element tag. And it's just style. That's simple. And you'll notice that we're putting this within the head element. That's where this goes. Because remember, it's not actually content. We're actually just styling some of the elements in the body. Remember, we're going to go ahead and paint some of these. We're going to give this some color, actually. So let's go ahead and add a closing tag for this. And there you go. Now, I want to point out two things. This style element is an HTML element. We put our CSS inside here, but this is actually an HTML element. So all of our CSS that we're going to code will go inside this element, everything inside here. I also want to point out that this is one way that we can reference our CSS. There are other ways we can go ahead and reference our CSS. This is just one way. Now, we will be covering that in future tutorials, but for now, this is one way. And just keep that in mind that there are other ways, and I will go over that in another tutorial. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save this document if you haven't already. And you want to save this as a HTML document. And it's probably going to say, I already have it there. It already exists. And I'm going to go ahead and hit yes to this. Now, what we want to do here is let's just take a look at the page minus any CSS. So we haven't added any CSS yet. We just added the HTML element. But let's go ahead and just minimize this. And we will open this up. And there you can see we have no color yet added to this. So let's close that out. And we'll go back to the source. Okay, so now we're back in the source. And let's go ahead and select the element that we want to style. And in this case, I want to select the H1 element. So we're going to go up here and type in H1. Now, this is the selector. And what we're doing is telling CSS this is the element that we want to style. So all we have to do is type in H1. Notice we don't have to use the angle brackets. We only have to type in H1, so just keep that in mind. Now, we also need an opening and closing squiggly bracket. And all the styles that we're going to do will go within these two brackets. So everything that we style in this H1 element will be between these two brackets. And uh, actually, let's create some space here so that we have, so it's a little easier to read this. Now we have to decide the style that we want to apply to here. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and change the background color of this. Now we could underline this, 
we could change the font there's all kinds of things we could do but in this case we're just going to do one style today now we'll cover all the different ways you can style HTML elements but in this case we're going to do background color and each one of these styles is called a property that's what they're actually called and the property we use is background hyphen color now again that is the property now after the property we put in a colon but we're not done now we have to specify what value that color is going to be or simply what color do we want this to be and in this case we want this to be purple and so that is the value and then we put in a semicolon and this is the way it's going to be for all the CSS that you do from this point on. This is the same type of thing you'll be doing. So you get really used to this. You'll put the property, you'll put a colon, then you have to specify the value that you want. In this case, we need a color, which is purple, and then you put a semicolon. Now, if we did another CSS property, we would just put this right below it, and we would do the same type of procedure. And actually what this semicolon does is it's a break. It says, okay, I'm done with this, move on to the next property. Now, collectively, all of this is called a CSS rule. But the way I like to think of it is we're just saying, hey, I want to style this H1 element, and I want the background to be purple. And as I said, if we want to add any other styles, we would just put them right below here. And again, we'll be doing that in future tutorials. So let's go ahead and save this now. And let's go ahead and open up the document. And there you can see we've got a purple background now for our head one element. Okay, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. I will see you guys in the second tutorial.